Today we have a, um, a marvelous artist, a very, very nice guy and a friend, and that's Mark. So Mark is going to show us um, his artwork. You can see a piece over his shoulder. He does beautiful, beautiful cars. But since that would take quite a long time to do, he's going to do something else, and he's going to tell us about it. So Mark, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Hello, everyone. It's nice to everyone, yeah. And uh, nice to be sharing some of uh, some some different techniques and, and stuff. How I, I do my abstract landscapes. Okay, so I think Ethel's going to show us yeah. a slideshow. Mm. And we want, as always, we want our friends to connect with our guests through socials. <clears throat> Mark is on Instagram. Uh, just search for Mark dot at dot midnight. He's also, of course, on Facebook. Just search for Mark dot Begby. <clears throat> and then, yes, Mark. The next couple of slides are your sample artworks, and we'd love to hear a line or two for each of these. Yeah. Um, I, the two things that I love painting is cars and abstracts. Um, cars because it's been in my family. My father worked in the car industry, etc. Um, I've always been around cars. We always had pieces of cars lying around, so I've loved cars. And uh, so this one is a, um, a Jaguar um, done in gouache, um, trying to keep it a limited color palette. Just uh, three colors in white. I think it's three. One, two, three in white. Um, so yeah, that's a Jaguar, a classic Jaguar. That one is a Morris Minor, uh, again in gouache. Um, yeah, uh, seen enough of those around Europe and uh, in South Africa, where I'm from originally, and uh, done in trying to get that green. Uh, the uh, the uh, correct um, period green. Uh, so quite a bit of mixing to get that green, but uh, yeah, came out quite nicely. I'm happy with it. Another car. <laughs> this is more um, illustrative. It's, uh, it's a Porsche. And uh, done in that whole um, painting was done in one color, just in indigo, besides the, the, the numbers at the bottom. Everything was done in one color, just indigo. And uh, yeah, it's a, a Porsche. I think I've got my son who's hanging that one in his bedroom right now. And a bit of um, breaking things down, trying to get the essence of uh, shadows and light. Uh, this is a Bugatti uh, sitting in water and trying to just get the, the basics down. So again, trying to live with the palette and uh, getting the, the shapes right and the, the shadows. And then this is more abstract. So this is uh, <clears throat> what I'll be showing more or less today, a little bit more abstract than that. But uh, yeah, I've, as you see, I love bright colors. So uh, using a lot of uh, the raw, uh, strong colors that, uh, that you can get with uh, Daniel Smith. And again, uh, abstract, sometimes uh, you can get the, the shapes coming through very nicely. And here you can see like a blue mountain background. Uh, the reason why I do abstract landscapes is because I just love the, the love of uh, the way the colors play. So put two colors together and let them do what they want to do. And as you can see, yeah, especially in the foreground, um, the different colors, how they play together. So it's, uh, yeah, abstract landscape. And that's the last image today, Mark. Okay, great. Cool. So, Mark, do you want to have questions at the end or as you're painting? Uh, as I'm painting is fine. Yeah, that's not a problem. All right. Um, so, so go ahead and start anytime you like. Great. Yeah. So, like I said, today um, I'll demonstrate some techniques that I use um, to get abstract landscapes. And I um, also say, share some of the, my color choices and how I choose them. And uh, 
we're going to be doing something a bit different. Um, some different techniques that uh, maybe you've seen before, but I use quite a lot. So um, let me start with the color choices I have. I, I like the high chroma colors. So um, what I've done here is I've just done some recipes, which I looked at to see what colors would work together. Um, and generally you got sky, you got trees, you got ground, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, because it's abstract, you can have anything you like. Uh, but some color recipes that I've looked at um, as I go along. And uh, there as well. Um, whatever works together. Sometimes you want the granulating colors and sometimes you don't. Um, but the nice thing about all these colors is you've got the granulating ones and they've got their character. Then you also got other colors that are quite pushy. So they all push colors away. Um, and uh, that's uh, what I'll be using today. And, and how they mix together. Sometimes they're naturally and sometimes they need to be encouraged. But each color has its own character. And uh, that's what I love about watercolor. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the colors I'm going to be using today um, is Cobblesol Violet, uh, Quinacridone Gold, Green Gold, some Quinacridone Magenta. Oh, okay. Thermo Blue. Um, which one is this? This is the green shade. And maybe if we're necessary, we might use some bloodstone. So that's the colors I'll be using. Now that I'll just run through the tools I'll be using because I'll be working fairly quick sometimes. Um, so I'll be using paintbrushes, uh, just the standard ones, a number four and probably a number eight or maybe a number 10. I'll be using a flat just a flat, which I use for generally just to get the water down. Um, and then I will be using these, which is actually um, gift cards, plastic gift cards that have been cut up to form different shapes. Yeah. So cut it up so I've got a round shape here, um, quite a sharp uh, shape, which you can use to, uh, to scratch on the page. And then I have two here, which I've also cut up. Once again, um, you can um, use to apply the, the paint, as I'll show you. Um, and I bent that one slightly, so it's got a nice, uh, nice application. And one a bit wider as well. And again, with this nice, strong, sharp point, which you can use to, um, to scratch on the page. Sometimes, if it's a bigger piece, I'll use a palette knife as well. Uh, but this one's a fairly smaller piece. Sometimes I work double the size, but today I'll just be doing this size. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a nice, uh, nice, decent palette knife, you can use that as well. Um, and what I tend generally do, if I can describe it first, is I'll, I'll apply the paint fresh out of here, out of, out of the tube, directly onto the page. Um, so let's start. Right. First thing I'd like to do is just get some, take some of the colors out of the tube and I'll apply them just to the palette over here. Could you tell us what your preferred uh, uh, paper is? Uh, my preferred paper is um, Fabriano Artistico um, Cold Press, which is this, this one here, um, and 100% uh, cotton. Thank you. I have got some other paper, but uh, also I've, I've used the rough as well, which is actually one of the paintings that was shown earlier. Uh, but the rough is, is can get lovely effects, but it's, it's a very rough paper. Maybe a bit too rough for this application. So all these colors are fairly strong, and that's why I like my paint. Um, and the high chroma colors, this magenta, the quinacridone magenta is lovely. Um, 
and I have two pushy colors here, um, the quinacridone gold and the green gold. They both, um, when they come into contact with other colors, tend to push them away sometimes. Um, and we, we use that to my advantage. Right, so we've got the colors down and I might add some more colors as we go along and, and apply them that way. The first thing I'd like to do is um, actually distress the paper. So it's a nice clean piece of page, but I don't want it that way. So in composition wise, I'm probably gonna use like maybe two thirds for foreground and, and, and the one third for ground, I mean for, for sky. But um, if you don't like a paper abuse, look away now because I'm going to get quite rough with it. And I'm going to push the paper around. It's quite uh, distressed. So when you distress the paper, you're breaking up the fibers. And the nice thing about it, sometimes the paint goes inside there and can be quite a bit um, more uh, uh, dark. And then the main thing that I use it for is because I'm going to be applying paint with one of the cards. And uh, once you, you, you start applying with the cards, it, it picks up on the, on the ridges and the valleys. And also later on when we get onto the, when we do the paint, when we, when we add the water, uh, you'll see that it, uh, it works with it as well. Right. So now I will stick it down. And generally I'll only stick the top section down because it's, it's, uh, sorry. I only stick the top section down because this point is putting any tape around the sides. Uh, the paint just goes underneath and you get a, a, a you don't get a nice edge. So it doesn't worry me too much that we don't have a, a wonderful board on it. Right. So the next thing I want to do is I will concentrate on the top part and then I'll work on the bottom part. So first we'll do the sky and the trees. So just a lot of wet water, wetting the whole surface. Coming down to the first ridge. And get it nice and even. start with the blue. This is the thalo blue.
bring it down into the into the dry section as well. As you see, it catches on the ridges. So Mark, how did you decide to do that thing where you scrunch the paper up? Was it just an experimentation? Pure experimentation, yeah. Just thinking outside oh, the box. Very and cool. Thinking, yeah, what else can you do? Um, so yeah. I've always been one that's just looking for the next best thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you know, you get taught. Well, you get uh, taught by you know many of these. Like if you watch lots of YouTube videos and things like that, then you got to have this next best thing to make you a better artist. Um, and to a fair degree, I, I think I follow that as well. Um, but then I realized, yeah, no, that's not true. But yeah, I think the fun is finding out your own 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 method and own own um, what makes make, what makes it fun for you mark that makes me think of a quote I heard today uh, serious work is born from serious play oh, that's nice yeah This is the, the violet coming through, just letting it come through as well. I will now spray this with my little sprayer. I have two sprayers, but this is a nice fine little one. I want to keep it wet on the top. And you'll see the colors coming through and mixing together. All right. Let's get some of that magenta in. Take a little bit of it into the bottom here. There you go. It's so fun watching you paint, Mark. I'm seeing all kinds of things in your abstract already. I could see like a little purple man walking with a little blue man. I could see trees and mountains. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's all part of the fun. Um, being abstract, sometimes you, you're not in total control. <laughs> and that's part of the, the fun of it. You know, what comes out is what comes out. Um, getting to know your, your, your materials is, a, is obviously a good thing and how they react. But uh, every time you do this, you get a different reaction. You get a different uh, painting. Um, that's what appeals to me is that... Um, to me, this is very non-committal abstract painting. So you can- Do you ever do, use the watercolor sticks? I do, yes. I won't be doing it today, but um, yeah, I have, uh, have used the watercolor sticks. And the way I would use them typically would be to, um, to, as we got the ridges here, I would, I just need to tilt this up a bit. I would, um, Dip the sticks in water, and then I would apply them uh, just to get that uh, that hue on. And then once you start wetting them, you know, they they come alive again. This is just so gorgeous, Mark. I love it. Thank you. Hey, I Mark. I love how the colors mix. Yeah, that's the joy to me. I, I, to me, color comes first. I just love colors, and. Um, the way they mix together um, makes us makes it the joy of watercolor to me. Hello, so Mark. Comment here about uh, the um, uh, Judy Wood. She says there's an inexpensive Asian paper that works well for crumbling into a little bowl and then painting florals or landscapes. Especially great for beginners. Oh, nice.
Yeah. Mark. Yeah. Um. Oh, with the ridges that you've created and that texture, but by crumpling yeah. it up, I, I thought a, a non-destructive way of doing it um, on the paper. Uh, have you ever seen that really heavy uh, acrylic stuff that you can apply to create texture? Now, that, that obviously, watercolour would bounce off that, but if you put yeah. some of uh, Daniel Smith's watercolour thing over it... Um, ground. Right. The, the ground, that, that would uh, make it so watercolour could be applied to it and you get a similar sort of raised effect from it. Yes, yes, definitely. If you if you're getting some, I've gotten some modeling paste previously, yeah, and um, use the modeling paste up on a board, not on paper. Paper's too flexible. Get the modeling modeling paste. You can create textures in it, and then you paint a well. You, you put a gesso layer basically of the watercolor ground, and uh, yeah, you can do amazing things like that as well. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Lori thinks that, uh, I, she says, I was thinking this technique would be a good stress reliever. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. And like I say, you can do a small one like this and it could take you 20 minutes if you really want. It's, it's non-committal. Um, it's just to relax sometimes and, and just unwind um, and, and have some fun. Right, so I've got some quinacra and gold here. And like I say, it's... Quite a bushy colour, and we will see it when it wet when I wet it. When you're done, do you need do you need to use spacers uh, if you're framing it because of the ridges? Yeah, generally, I'd get like two layers of border just to you know, give it some space above. Uh, but I do tend to also uh, put, put it under a lot of books as well to, to flatten it down afterwards. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And this is the green gold. I'm gonna get some more green gold. Have you ever applied directly from the tube? Directly on the tube? Like, from, yeah, like that, yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. That's an idea. Yeah. Do it, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will try that, actually. <laughs> Which color should we use? Let's go for pin gold. An explosive color, please. Yeah. There you go. It's a bit dirty. Whoa. That's my lot. <laughs> Mark, Kathy says, hello all from snowy eastern Washington state, USA. Mark, your bright colors are cheerful on this white gray day. Oh, that's great. So glad to hear, yeah. I'm, I'm in eastern um, Canada, on the east coast in Halifax, and uh, we haven't got snow yet, but it's definitely winter. Um, so I choose <laughs> intentionally bright colors because um, that's what I, I grew up with in South Africa, and uh, that's what makes me happy as well. Yes, we're all happy. Right. So, let's have a look. How's that sky doing? Ian is asking, what weight is the paper? I think you mentioned it's 300 grams, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. And what is it taped to? Like board, what sort of board is that? 
This is just one of those um, corrugated plastic boards. Um, yeah, I like it. You can get it at the general uh, craft store. Um, um, it's nice and light and it supports the painting very well. Yeah. Um, that looks great. Those colors here are lovely. All right, they are lovely. They're blending in wonderfully. Yes. So we've got some very wet patches here, which I'm just going to add a little bit. Wonderful dark values also. Those are hard to get sometimes. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and just be wary if you're going to use complementary colors in this kind of situation that remember that two complementaries make it black or dark brown. So if you mix them too much, you, you get that brown, which is not always what you want. But uh, yeah, you can use some nice recipes and um, and the colors that uh, that work well together. Mark? Yeah. Uh, if you put some bright greens in the sky, you might get away with it looking like northern lights. <laughs> Maybe. That's true. A little bit. You know, some like oh, almost right. really bright green that it has. That's true, yeah. I should try that as well. Yeah, I'm thinking about it as well. While it's still wet, it will yeah. still do it, won't it? I don't know what it'll do with it when it goes dry. That's true. We have here a compliment, uh, a comment for John. <laughs> Thanks to John for searching out artists who can inspire us with new techniques. This is so fun and inspirational. Thank you. That's good to hear. Yeah. Right. So that is drying and it's going to take a while to dry. Uh, I'm going to just let it do its thing. Um, I might uh, use the, uh, the hairdryer. I don't usually use a hairdryer, but I might use a hairdryer to um, to speed up things. But what I generally do now is I've got my card with the sharp edges on the sides. Um, where's the other one? That one. No, this is my favorite one. And um, now I'm going to just uh, scrape and, and cut. So scrape on the, the, the sides and then um, cut into the paper with the sharp edge. So where you scrape, it's going to obviously it's going to push the paint away. Uh, where you uh, where you cut into the paper, if it's too deep, it'll um, scour into the paper and that'll make the paint darker in that area. So you can use both both methods. So there we go. Just need to look for if it's too wet, then you won't get the effect. So if it's too dry, you won't get that effect either. There you can see I can scour into the page. Always keeping it clean, otherwise your colours will mix up into each other. Let's try here. Not too bad. This is a very wet spot here, so I'll leave that for a while. Yeah, I can't even get anything out of that one. There we go. So now we're getting some form in these trees. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dogs are reacting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. And while that's working, let's uh, start working on the bottom part. So the bottom part, I will basically use my spray bottle. So the colors are on there and uh, we're just gonna waken them up now. So, spraying them. And this is where it gets messy. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, right. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Which sky blues? Sorry, say again? Which blues were you using in the sky? The Thalo blue green shade? Yeah. Yeah. This painting is like watching magic happen. It's it is that. <laughs> it's the magic of watercolor. It's just, just uh, that's why I say you, in in oil paints, your paints have got a certain character. In in, in acrylics, they got a certain character, but in watercolor, they got more character than anything else because I think they're mostly water. I mean, they're mostly pigment, uh, as John has explained to us in many times. He is asking, did Mark say he was from Halifax, Nova Scotia? Yeah, that's correct. I'm originally from South Africa and I'm living in Halifax, Nova Scotia at the moment. Uh, we've been here for 10 years, I think. 10 years? So, I think I saw somewhere in the chat someone was from Tanzania in South Africa. And uh, I've been there. I did a few Tanzania? Hours. Yeah. Um, that's Anne Marie living there. Uh, hi, Henry. Um, yeah, I've, Zini River Estate probably means quite a lot to you. I've done quite a few houses there because uh, I'm not a professional artist. Um, one day when I grow up, I want to be. But um, currently, I, uh, my background is in architecture and I run the architectural department for a, a larger engineering firm at the moment in Halifax. And uh, I've done a lot of work in South Africa as well. Mark. Yeah. I've got to pull you up on that one. Uh, architects are artists. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I'm an architectural technician, I'm only saying that. <laughs> All right. Bias. Yes, that is true. Yeah, design's always been in my, my family. My brother's a... It's a uh, great art form, architecture. Yeah. My brother's a graphic designer. And my niece is a an art, um, an art teacher in New Zealand. So it's, oh, it's wow. definitely been in the family. Mm -hmm. Mark, to achieve this uh, dark uh, on the left, on the bottom left, what is that? Uh, this one, yes. What color is that? Or is that a mixture? That's a mixture of the magenta, Queen Magenta, and um, the um, Green Gold and the Queen, Queen Gold as well. Ah. Oh. Fantastic. So now, because of these colors are nice and raw, I can encourage them sometimes. Mark, I can see the yellow pushing up into the phthalo blue of the sky. Yes. At some point, do you set the board down so that it dries and stops moving so that the, so that the unique shapes uh, stay, or do you keep moving it until the end? I, I basically keep moving it until the end. Uh, the other thing that happens often is that uh, yeah, the, the colors dry a little bit lighter. So I will sometimes come in there and I'll, I'll paint, uh, give them some more definition to those areas as well. But yeah, like I said, good. Uh, good catch there because the the Quinn gold is a very much a pushy paint and um, it's a golden color but as a maybe I bring it up closer 
as it's gone and touched the, the phthalo blue, it's pushed up into the color and it's mixed and then you've got a nice green as well. Fantastic. As see, yes. It's actually creating these, all this, these uh, great shapes. Well, actually you wanted to, to do that. You wanted yeah. to creep into the blue, yeah? Yeah. Right, so I'll probably keep this upright a little bit because uh, I, I don't want it going up too much higher. But uh, everything nice, is nice and tacky at the bottom. Uh, and I will take my scraper and, uh, and I'll give some definition here. So maybe we'll, we want some rocks here. You know, the background, they reminds me of the, um, of the mountains of Machu Picchu, you know, in the mist. Okay, that's nice. There. And maybe we get some definition. So this is fairly wet. We'll calm this uh, sailor down a bit. I have taken an old credit card and cut through the numbers and used that portion to dip into the paint and scrape it across. And it gives a texture almost like a birch tree. Okay. That sounds like a good idea as well. I'm, I should write these ones down. Because um, I did have, I have one here that I don't use much. That's an old Costco membership, but cutting the, the, the ridges right you know, with, a, uh, uh, with a knife and then also creating a very serrated edge. Um, you could use That's that as really well. Really clever. So let me demonstrate. Oh, wow. <laughs> and gauge shears would work too. Yeah. <laughs> Right, let's see if any of these are good to go. It's still very wet in the... Mark, yeah. Ha have you tried doing uh, this technique with wash yet? Um, I have tried um, a little bit once with the wash, but I, have, I do want to try some more. Okay. Um, it, it would be, hmm. you know, it would be a nice balance, I think. Um, so I'm going to definitely try the, the wash. Um, I've got some leaf coming up, and I'm. That's one of the things that I'm looking forward to is actually just spending some time trying out a different technique and, and working with the gouache. Mark, you've definitely inspired me. Yes. Yes. Right. Very inspirational. And so free because you don't have to be tied to a particular shape or anything. Right. No, it's purely what you want. Yeah. It's, it's your art. Exactly. Yeah. Right, there's one more thing I'd like to do as I go along here, is I'm going to be using um, alcohol spray. Um, this is 70% rubbing alcohol, which you get from the dollar store. Um, I don't know if you've used alcohol before on your painting. It's not for me, it's for the painting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, would have, you would have vodka at least, or <clears throat> something else. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's uh, so I'm gonna use this and you'll see what it does. So. Mark. 
Yeah. Whoa. Uh, what what percentage uh, alcohol is it? Because you, you tend to get it in two different types. Is like is it sixty percent and eighty percent? This one's a seventy percent. Is it seventy? Is it? Yeah. Because uh, you, you you get slightly different feels from them as you use it. Yes. Yeah, I have used a stronger one before, and it actually went into the paper. Yeah. Dark spots were those different ones, obviously. Um, the trick with alcohol is knowing when to apply it, because if you mm. apply it too soon, as you can see, it disappears. Um, if you apply it too late, well, it's too late. So I tend to work on it as I go along, because we've got various parts that are drying and various parts that are wet still. And it does look very dramatic when you first apply it, but it's alcohol and it dries out. And um, mm. you, you'll see it on there. So are you saying it still has to be slightly damp when you have when you apply it? Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. You'll see there. Okay. Even big drops like that, well, they'll, they'll disappear. That's cool. Wow, nice. You've almost got like a moon thing on the right yeah. hand side there, yeah. like a moon rising. A few moons. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, yeah I thought that alcohol didn't interact with watercolor. So yeah. it does. Yeah. It does very much. Depends on how aggressive you are with it. Exactly, yes. It all depends how, how much mm. you want to put yourself. This is fabulous. Can you use it to actually lift while it's wet on the uh, where the alcohol is? I'm not too sure. Probably could, yeah. I can try that. Just want to wet this bottom part here. Just need a little bit of dampness into it. We have a comment here from Jane. She says, absolute inspiration. I love painting with the queen colors and I've dropped alcohol on a painting, but now I need to load up a spray bottle. So much new stuff for my brain to absorb. Thank you for the experience. That's you see, Mark, what you're doing to us? <laughs> brain overload. <laughs> brain overload. <laughs> well, that's what's so valuable about these times on Friday that yeah show us everybody's different ways of playing yes it's yeah. like having the same tools but different toolboxes all over the place right i was going to say the same thing beautiful mark thank you so i'm getting some some grass coming through there and it's literally just dragging some of the colors into each other and stretching mm -hmm. into, the, into the surface. Really nice work how you start finding the lens. Thank you. Nancy Smith is asking, is he using Yupo paper now? No, I don't think so. No. It's not true. You're using Fabiano, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Fabiano. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with this textured card that you have that is cut, you can yeah. always put some uh, or dip it into the color and then draw lines with that as well. Yes. What a beautiful landscape, Northern Lights landscape. Yeah. Or in my case, Southern Lights. Southern. Mm. I don't know what they call that properly. The the one that's in the South Hemisphere. I'm sure somebody will look it up. <clears throat> Sandra says, I'm going to try this today. So, mm -hmm. well done. Good, good. I was thinking of trying it as well. Me too. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. 
Mark, do you have an inspiration or a launch point for starting the idea from? Because abstracts can be daunting without a, without a starting point. The real starting for, point for me is the colors. Uh, choosing two colors. It's usually I, I, I see I like, like green gold and mm -hmm. I really love this color and I want to paint with it. Now what goes with it? So I'll do my do some recipes like I do here. Recipes. And, and then it will develop from there. So usually it's because I'm a, a pigment nerd. Um, it's a color first. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's why I get so excited every time I get a new color because uh, it's my new best friend. And uh, <laughs> then I gotta see what it works with and, and, and play with it. Mark, at least Mark, what five kind of times. Pattern do you have? So, Mark, what kind? What um, is your palette? What kind of palette? I like your palette. My palette is it a ceramic palette. No, I actually got uh, I got one of the the, the standard. Uh, oh, okay. My color palettes. Gotcha. Metal. Yeah, metal. Metal white. Yeah. And uh, I put them in order, but. Uh, I don't generally keep them in order because, like you see here on the, on the side here, mm -hmm. um, these are the colors that I'm using today. So I'll put them aside and, and, and just concentrate on those because when you start looking at all these colors, they look so delicious. And you start thinking, well, <laughs> if I add a bit of orange in there or I've added a bit of red there. And then I get carried away. So this is a bit of discipline on my part. Thank you. My sorry. Are there colors that you find that you've come back to over and over again? Yeah, the green gold, definitely. Um, thalo yellow green uh, shade. I like that very much. Um, and naphthamide violet maroon. And then serpentine. That's just, that's just so much fun playing with them. Mark. Yeah. But would you now call this uh, an abstract painting? Is it as narrative now? I still call this abstract. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, Mark, at, you... at least five times in your presentation, you've had images that I consider a very beautiful painting. And then you keep making it more beautiful. When yeah. do you ever decide that the painting is done? Oh, I hate that. The question. one million dollar question. Oh, <laughs> the question. I'm, I'm notorious for overworking my drawings, uh, my painting. So um, <laughs> I I usually try and step back whenever um, I, I I think it's 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 done. Um, I always revisit my paintings as well, though. So I will come back and and you know a few hours later say, mm, yeah, that can be darker and that can be lighter. Um, so I'm I'm notorious in that way that I'm very much uh, never ending painting. It's, it's mm. never ending. Do you have any tricks or methods that help you not overwork the painting that would help the rest of us? Because I'm watching you doing this thing. I would overwork it 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <you have> any... <laughs> well, I'm reaching the point of overworking as well. Um, it's when, when you think you can't do any more, but you think you can do more, and you shouldn't do more. <laughs> that sounds awful. Yeah, that's a good, that's a uh, good rule. That's a, yeah, you, 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 at that point where, uh, yeah, that what that all that one little thing make a difference. That little thing there might make a difference, and then you realize no, no actually, that when you're looking at the little things like that, you you're overdoing it. Uh, yeah. Have you applied this technique to doing, um, since your background is architecture? Uh, more uh, cityscapes or architectural drawings, draw uh, paintings. Um, I don't generally do architectural drawings. I used to. Um, <laughs> I work with very structured um, stuff, at, you know, day in and day out in, in my work, and I want something very unstructured, very um, freedom. Um, mm -hmm. So this is where. I got went to, into uh, the abstract um, landscapes. So I suppose yeah. you need the contrast, right? After very structured and very tight, then yes. you to get 
free. Yeah, it's a freedom. It's a beautiful point. It's really outstanding. And saying that architecture has become much more abstract. When when you see when you see the inner workings of a building shown to you rather than hidden away, that's more abstract than it ever used to be. Yes. Yeah. New techniques and new methods of of, um, of, of working in the office uh, are changing things definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very exciting. I love it. I love architecture. Um, and I love art. Uh, it's the best. Mark, I have one for you. Since you are so into color, is there any color that you have that just plain depresses you when you put it on the paper? And you really <laughs> should throw it out, but you don't. You just keep it there. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't have a good question. question. <laughs> Does everybody have that kind of situation where there's a color that you, oh, I'll try using this, and it's like, oh, no, not that again. <laughs> yeah, tear <care of> the... <laughs> not if it's a Daniel Smith color. No. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. It's difficult to be depressed with the Daniel Smith color. You know, I can't think of any single color, because like I said, I tend to buy one color at a time because I, I love color. And then I'll work on it and see what it works next to and, and what it works uh, with. So I'll, I, I love all colors. But you see, the abstract painting, you can just concentrate on one area and you can make it, you can see things there. Like, mm -hmm. like, yes. like you see in this gray thing on the, on the right. I can see almost a tent or things, you know, and, and you can then continue them and make them uh, more figurative if you want. Yeah. Absolutely. And like I say, it's, it's non-committal. It's uh, sometimes I work out wonderfully and sometimes, you know, the section might not be as, as you like it. That's fine. It doesn't bother me because um, I will obviously trim these edges um, but if that section works for me, then I'll just use that as a painting or, or that section or, or whichever part. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, the most important thing is you have fun and you experiment and, and you learn as you go along. Um, yep. Very good philosophy. Okay, I think I must leave this alone for a while. Um, Christine says, I think nearly everyone watching this are going to try it as soon as they can. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's not a question of trying it. Mark has it's shown us so many it. different things that yeah. there's a week of trying of all, all the different things he's shown. I love his spray bottle. <laughs> I have a, a painting that deserves the spray bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it was a failure. <laughs> So yeah, generally that's how my painting would go. The one thing I would do is I'd probably wait until this dries because it will dry a little bit lighter and then I'll come in with, uh, with a paintbrush and um, with the, some color and, and, and dark in the map to get some dark values. Mm. But uh, generally that's yeah. more or less done for now. It's beautiful. We're wow. wrong way. Wow. Amazing. It's so impressive. Yes. And it has so much contrast and it, yet so much light. Yeah. It has a white in a paper. Yeah. yeah. And the yellow, it's, it's so yeah. bright. Fantastic, really. Yeah. Is that the Quinn Gold? The yellow is Quinn Gold, Mark? That's correct, yeah. Quinn Gold and... Uh, <laughs> Quinn, Quinn, sorry, the green is Quinn Gold and the, the yellow is the uh, Quinacrylon Quinacry Gold, sorry, yeah. So okay. green gold, <laughs> getting them all mixed up. Okay. Mark, would you talk about the colors in your sky and who's pushing who around there? Well, I think um, at the moment, the way they're looking about is that that Quinn Gold is, um, 
is touching, what has been touching the, the Taylor blue and just pushing it all up as it's going up, yeah. And it's amazing that over time it's pushed it up that high. Um, mm. And then in the bottom here, you can get them mixing together and you get the lovely greens. Mm. So the uh, cobbles or violet is, is a bit, uh, bit, bit more of a not so worried, but it's a, <clears throat> it's a, it, it complements them nicely as well. So you said the quin gold is the pushy color. Yeah, quin gold and the quin uh, and the green gold as well. Okay. Um, some other pushy colors are the nickel azo yellow. They push quite a lot as well. Uh, the bismuth vanadate, I can think it's also quite pushy. And uh, Aussie red gold. Can you repeat the second to last one, please? The, what did I say? Nicolas yellow, maybe? Bismuth vanadate. Bismuth vanadate, yeah. Yeah, the yellow. No one there, bismuth vanadate. Uh, nickel azo, uh, Aussie red gold. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Now is she's saying cropping. Sorry, cropping is your friend. In my recent class, we found four fantastic little paintings in one larger painting. Wonderful for making cards. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mark, can you zoom in on your on your work? I can raise it up. Up a bit. I know. Uh, away from you yeah. there. Away from you, and then it goes. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. All that texture I love. All those colors I love. Yeah. It's kind of cool because it looks like you can see the grasses and then the roots yeah. and the rocks, almost like you're looking in the layers of the soil, you know? It's absolutely beautiful, Mark. Bravo. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes. And all in less than an hour. Yes. It looks much more involved than that, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. Man. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Mark. I'm, I'm so going to go with Michelle and... Uh, Great job. It was beautiful. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. Thank you. Well done, awesome. Awesome. Amazing Mark, colors. Good job. Thank you, Mark. Good job. Fantastic. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very inspirational. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a great